Every day I use TikTok to watch attractive people dance or fry my brain until it looks like a funnel cake you'd get at a state fair. And earlier today, while I was further lobotomizing myself by scrolling my For You page, I noticed something new at the top of the screen. It was this STEM section. And when you click on it, it says, Welcome to the STEM feed. In this feed, you'll see trending videos related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yep, it's happening. They're making TikTok useful. Not that it isn't already useful, it is. It's the best place to find out why everyone hates Hailey Bieber every couple months. So TikTok has always been useful, but now it's educational. And as a full-time engineer, I just don't feel like I'm learning enough new things every day. So let's take a look at TikTok's new STEM feed and see if we can't learn a thing or two. Also, before this video starts, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. It doesn't really do anything for you, but it helps me out a lot. So thanks if you do that. Scientists just went to the bottom of the ocean. Here's some stuff they found. First up, they found this. We don't, we don't have to take it out of the bottom of the ocean. We can leave it there. I don't know why humans do this. They always have to take something cool from another spot and then bring it over to people to be like, look, look at this thing that that place has. But I actually think it makes sense, right? Because you ever have something really cool happen to you and then you try to tell that story to your friends and you're like, nah, you're fucking with me. They're like, oh yeah, okay, sure. And then you have to show them the video to be like, no, look, it really happened. Just for them to be like, oh. Yeah, okay. That's the thing. Even when you show people evidence of the cool thing you found or the cool thing you did, they don't even have a big reaction. They're just like, okay, yeah, no, you can vouch for yourself. Good for you. The payoff is never worth it, but we still record everything and we still take things from other places just to show other people that we don't even really need validation from that. Look, I found this thing. It is known as the high fin lizard fish and is actually hermaphroditic, meaning it has male and female reproductive organs. And they also found this disturbing creature that is actually a type of blind eel that gives live birth, which is very unusual for most fish. What are you talking about? Are you saying that fish usually give birth when they're dead? Okay, so I did a quick Google search and apparently live bearers give birth to fully formed and functional young called fry. So the eggs are fertilized and hatched within the female. So they come out full fish. Think of it as the fish having a running start into life, you know? It's like the fish has a benefit that other fish don't. Yeah, the fish has like a head start in life. It's like the parents are rich, but they don't give the kid money, they give them time. Yeah. They also found this adorable deep sea batfish that I'm kind of obsessed with. Oh, you're obsessed, huh? Name every batfish. Yeah, I'm tired of people being like, oh, I'm obsessed with this thing. Oh yeah? What was their relationship with their parents growing up? Hmm? Did you even watch the batfish documentary? <laughs> yeah. Some kind of obsessed fan you are. Loser. Inside this jar is a juicy African snail. And I've always wondered, what would is Why'd you say juicy? Mmm, inside this jar is just a scrumptious little snail. Mmm, inside this jar, absolutely drenched, it's just a snail I'm waiting to sink my teeth into. Oh, this is just a wet little snail. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that, man? And I've always wondered, what would a snail look like without its shell? I kind of thought it would look like a slug, but I was wrong. Check this out, it has a big curvy body under the shell. Here at the base is its main lung, and up towards the top, it has a giant digestive gland. So, huh, that's what a snail looks like without its shell. Hmm. I guess I did learn something today. I also like that they call it a little swirly part, which by the way, it looks like a poop emoji. I think they called it a digestive gland, which is just like the delicate way of saying, you know, the place it shits from. <laughs> He said it was a juicy snail, right? And we can see it's packing, so, you know, probably wears those, you know, those, like, bedazzled juicy pants. <laughs> That's stupid. That's dumb. <laughs> Species has been on the planet for about 100 million years. And you can see we got one here, tied with a rope. Imagine being on the world for 100 million years. Just to have some stupid ass human hook you in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, I'd be pissed as hell. That'd be so upsetting. You've been apparently a top level predator for millions of years. Just to have some human come along and be like, ha ha, we'll call that a long nose and let's hook it so we can take this little video for a couple thousand views. <laughs> God, the world, it's, it's a cruel, unforgiving place. All right, so you're asked to find X in this question, but 
the only formula you know is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, the Pythagorean theorem. Although you could use it, there's another simpler way to do this. Because if you know your Pythagorean triplets, which is derived from this equation right here, you know that 3, 4, 5 is one of the ratios for the Pythagorean triplets. And what's kind of neat is that 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12, so it means x is just equal to 5 times 3, which is 15. And that right there is going to be your answer. I mean, yeah, you could just do that with the Pythagorean theorem. You didn't, you didn't got to go and do all that. 9 squared, 81, plus 12 squared, 144, is 225. Square root of 225 is 15, which is 5 times 3, like you said. Why did, you don't got to do all this. I swear, sometimes, you know, you see, like, a math hack online, and they'll say something weird like, Oh, you know, 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. But did you know if you multiply 2 by the whole thing, and you get an answer of 4, and you divide both sides by 2, you actually get your answer of 2, which is your answer. Yeah, I mean, okay, that is correct. That, yes, that works out that way. But you're just trying to find 5 minus 3. You don't got to do all that. Why would you multiply by 2? Yeah, math stuff online is either one of three things. It's either wrong, it's right, but it's like, why would you do it that way? Or it's perfect and taught by an Indian guy with a really heavy accent that you start to develop a stronger bond with than you have with your very own father. There's, there's no in-between. See, but like, so why'd you do it like that, though? The shark you're looking at is known as a Greenland shark, and this one might be older than the United States. They're actually the longest living vertebrate on planet Earth. Okay. <laughs> cool. That one socially awkward friend at a party that just starts spitting shark facts, because that's the only thing they're comfortable talking about. Yeah, did you know there's actually like a millions of different species of sharks yeah yeah did you actually know that uh sharks were more scared of humans than we are of them that's pretty crazy right considering how scared we are of them did you know that sharks actually have a bunch of rows of teeth so you know if they were to get uh, retainers they would have to get <laughs> multiple rows of them how hard would that be to keep track of right <laughs> oh are we drinking uh can we do that one in the fishbowl with the shark and the blood the blood in the water one can we do that one that one's really cool if we could do that it's shark themed I don't know if I told you that. <laughs> I also love his smile at the end of the TikTok. He's just so proud of himself. He's like, yeah, that's the two things I just said. They're correct. Yeah, you know that shit I just laid down? It's 100% accurate. Pretty tight, right? So I just got finished crying because I learned a fact about everyone's dogs. You're going to want to hear this. So you know when you're trying to go to the bathroom and they keep trying to like nose their way in or they're always like standing at the door and you're always like, get, like I'm trying to go to the bathroom by myself. Apparently, when like wolves and wild dogs, they protect one another while one goes to the bathroom because when you're going to the bathroom, you're like vulnerable. So they like stand guard. They'll be next to you to make sure that no one attacks you. So basically, I'm part of his pack. Okay, that, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that would make me cry. That's just... That's interesting. That's interesting. That is. It's it's also funny because what if there's a dog that doesn't have that built in and he's just a freak? He's just sincerely like, no, nah, I like to watch them piss in front of me. It's kind of my thing. No, yeah, nothing gets me more torqued up than watch my trainer drop a deuce that's pretty much like the size of me. I've been making trainers dog would be like that. <laughs> if you move a rectangle of glass like this in front of some light like these lasers, the light goes straight through it. And even if you change the angle of it, it may bend that light, but the light still ends up going all the way through it. But then if you have a prism, so like a triangle looking piece of glass like this, if you move it in front of the light, instead of traveling through, it completely reflects off of this surface. So the only difference there is that you're going from glass to air. So that difference in materials that the light is moving through, along with its angle, causes that reflection. But if you put two of these prisms together, 
then it's essentially just a rectangle of glass. You would think it would function sort of like one of these. But if you move that in front of the light, you still get those same reflections. So why is that happening when now there's glass on both sides of this surface? Well, that's because I can't really combine these two pieces of glass unless I maybe heated them up and merged them together. There's still a little bit of air stuck between here because these surfaces aren't perfect. So this acts just like it would if this wasn't there at all. But if I was able to merge these into one single piece of glass in the same shape, it would behave just like this. Mm-hmm, see? It's facts like these. Why China is kicking our ass in test scores. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't know how light works, huh? Idiot. <laughs> yeah, it's because you don't know how light works. That's why you can't do your taxes, you dummy. <laughs> oh, you don't know how to change a tire? Well, did you know there's a shark that's older than the United States of America? Hmm? You've never seen this before. This water is freezing, melting, and boiling all at the same time. It's a liquid, a solid, and a gas at once. It's known as the triple point of water where the temperature and pressure create this incredible effect. Share this with a friend so they learn something. Okay, let's say I share this with a friend. What are they learning? Let's, yeah, I send this to a friend. They open it up. They're like, okay, so there's a point at which water can be in all three states, which I don't think he even says. I don't think he mentions what that point is. And then what? What, that's the point? That's what they learn? It, that this is a thing? Then what? <laughs> oh, maybe it's because I'm not smart enough to know why this is important for everyone to know. I have to spend more time in the STEM feed to become smart enough to know why everyone needs to know this. Holy shit. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Or it's just bullshit. These are refrigerator magnets and they get really strong when you put them together. These are the first set of magnets I ever got, but when you use them individually, they're not very strong. But when you put them together, they can be really powerful. My neodymia magnets are different though. When you put two of them together, they get weaker, but they would get stronger if they were the same size and shape. Let's test them out. The neodymium magnets are still stronger, but these magnets are way cheaper. Yeah, it's like a great philosopher once said, ape alone weak, ape together, strong. Also, the first half of this TikTok was completely useless. Can we talk about that? Mushrooms are talking to each other. <laughs> that sounds like a headline of like a Hollywood gossip page. Oh my God, mushrooms are talking, sparking dating rumors. <laughs> Study in the Royal Society of Open Science found that electrical signaling in mushrooms looks a lot like the patterns found in human speech. Ah, electrical signals. And it looks like we're seeing a spark between the couple. Okay. With some mushrooms using up to 50 words. So the next question is, what are they talking about? How about you stay the fuck out of their business? How about that? Hmm? God, celebrity gossip has even infiltrated the world of mushrooms. When does it stop, huh? Leave Toad alone, okay? Let him have his private life. Okay, I'll give you the moon. Here, come here, come here, come here. Stand right here. Okay, you now have the moon. And so, so put it where, you, where the moon is, relative to Earth you, is the size. Where do you think it is? Right about there. That's, that's about the right distance. Given that this is 20 inches and this is five, you think the moon is... Right about there. Okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> Neil's like, okay, okay, okay. How do I tell him he's an idiot in the nicest way possible? And then continues to do it in just the most condescending, backhanded way as possible. <laughs> that is way off, okay? Okay, or he's <laughs> just direct about it. Holy fuck. <laughs> so listen, hey, I am a doctor, not that kind of doctor, but I'm enough of a doctor to tell you, hey, you've been diagnosed with stupid. You're an idiot, man. Why the fuck would a moon be there, dumbass? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, just start backing up. Keep going. Keep going. Turn, turn around while you're going. Keep going. That, that's about right. Yeah. That's about the Earth-Moon distance. Yeah, you know why? You've been lied to by textbooks that have to squeeze them both into the same page. Big textbooks, I tell you, they're not only weighing down your backpacks, but they're also lying to you. 
That's right. They're these piece of shit textbooks confined by their physical limits. You pieces of shit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in uh, every textbook, there's probably like a little scale, a little key thing on the bottom showing that, oh, this much space is uh, one inch equals 100,000 million miles, you know? And so, yeah. Also, aren't textbooks written by like scientists and stuff? Aren't they run by people like Neil to be like, this is right, right? Also, the, it's funny to say textbooks are lying to you. Like, do textbooks have some weird agenda to be like, yeah, yeah, lie to them. Tell them the moon is closer to the Earth than they think it is. And that'll really get them. I don't think textbooks give a fuck what we think our perception of the moon-Earth relationship is. Oh, oh my god. Unless textbooks want us to think they're closer than we actually are. When in reality, the Earth and moon are actually very separate. The Earth and moon are like two parents fighting and the textbook is like the kid that goes to school and being like, no, mom and dad are fine. They're not. They're close. They're really close. They don't. Yeah. They spend a lot of time together. <laughs> this is a jar full of remora. They're those fish that stick to sharks and whales. But how do they stick? Well, let's take a closer look. So they don't have suction cups on their bellies like I thought. But what about on the top of their heads? Ooh, do you see those folds and flaps? When they're underwater, Remoras can squeeze those flaps like muscles, suctioning themselves onto the surface of another animal. And when they release those flaps, they let go. Damn, okay. So as long as they can suck well, they can hang out and get free meals. Okay, I know what that sounds like. Well, I don't know about you, but I learned a lot using the stem feed on TikTok. Does that mean I'll be using it again? No, of course not. But it was nice while it lasted, right? And actually, let's keep the good times rolling. So before you like this video and follow me on Instagram, Edgar Burke, let's take a look at one last TikTok from the stem feed. Not that anybody asked, but lines of longitude on Earth? Every 15 degrees is approximately one time zone. They get adjusted to go around national borders and state boundaries, that sort of thing. But Lines of longitude demark time, yet all lines of longitude meet at the poles. So what time is it at the poles? <laughs> that one friend, when you ask him, do you feel it yet? <laughs> <laughs>